In this video, we'll go over the steps that you should follow when using the distance modulus in your calculations for spectroscopic parallax. Now, you may have noticed that the distance modulus was given in two separate formats at the beginning of the video. The first format is the one that we're most likely more familiar with in our class, and that's the one where the distance modulus is written as d equals 10 to the power of lowercase m minus uppercase m plus 5 all over 5, where lowercase m represents the apparent magnitude of the star, and uppercase m represents the absolute magnitude. Now these two magnitudes are going to be either given to you or you can determine them from the HR diagram if you're using the HR diagram as your source for the absolute magnitude, in which some cases we will do this for our class. And the last variable in this equation is the variable d itself, which represents the distance in units of parsecs. So we are always going to be using the variable d in units of parsecs, which is abbreviated as pc in our calculations. This is one format that the distance modulus can be given in. The other format, which we'll take a closer look at in a separate video, is the following, where you have m minus m equals 5 log d minus 5. So let's get started with our first example, where we will be making use of the first format of the distance modulus equation which is the one given right there being highlighted. So now we know exactly which one we're using, but we need an example to make use of it. So in the first example, we are given the following information. A star has an apparent magnitude of 2.8 and an absolute magnitude of 3.1. How far away is that star? So the way to go about solving this problem is to identify the values we've been given in the problem, in which case we have an apparent magnitude of 2.8 and an absolute magnitude of 3.1. In the forms of the variables, that means that the lowercase m, which we'll use, is 2.8, and the capital M is 3.1. Now, this is important for us to know because we're going to be using lowercase and uppercase m in the distance modulus itself, which says d equals 10 to the power of m minus m plus 5, all over 5. So let's jump right into it and get started. So I'm going to rewrite the equation itself, where we have d equals 10 to the power of m minus m plus 5 all over 5. But now we also know that we can plug in 2.8 for lowercase m and 3.1 for uppercase m. So in the next step, I will go ahead and replace those variables in the exponent on my 10 with the numbers that they represent instead. So we have 2.8 minus 3.1 plus 5 all over 5. And when we do the calculations for that, 2.8 minus 3.1 plus 5 is equal to 4.7. So we're going to do 10 to the power of 4.7, still divide that by 5, which means if we divide 4.7 by 5, we get 0.94. So now the exponent on the 10 is 0 0.94. And we want to make sure that we're calculating the exponent correctly, because if the exponent is not accurate, it's going to throw off the rest of our calculations. So at this point, now we have to do 10 to the power of 0 0.94. So using the app calculator plus, I can go ahead and actually do the calculation myself by just plugging in some numbers. So let's do 10, and then to bring up a template for the exponent, I will be pressing the x to the power of n button right here to bring up that potential spot for me to type in the next number. So now I'll type in 0 0.94, press enter, and that's going to give me my answer for right now, 8.709-6359. Now, do we need that many digits in our final answer? No, not necessarily. So we're just going to go ahead and round off to the amount of significant figures that we have in our original problem which means when we go back down to our actual final answer, we only need the first two digits in the final answer here, which would be just the 8.7 itself. So the final answer we can round off to 8.7 parsecs. Now that's it for that example, so let's move on to the next one. Example 2 says a star has an apparent magnitude of 7.3 and an absolute magnitude of negative 2. What is the distance to this star? 
In order to solve this problem, we again have to identify our apparent magnitude value and our absolute magnitude value. So in this case, we have variables lowercase m and uppercase m given as 7.3 and negative 2, respectively. And these are going to be used in the distance modulus, which says d equals 10 to the power of lowercase m minus uppercase m plus 5, all of that over 5. So let's go ahead and plug in 7.3 for lowercase m. And now, in order for us to plug in negative 2, come back. In order for us to plug in negative 2 for uppercase m, we have to make note of the fact that there's already a negative there in front of the capital M. So we have minus negative 2 plus 5 all over 5. Now, if we go back to the ancient rules of algebra, anytime we have two negatives back to back, that's going to turn into a positive. So in reality, what we're actually dealing with here is 10 to the power of 7.3 plus 2 plus 5 all over 5. So now that we have this funky looking thing, we can go ahead and figure out how to simplify that entire exponent. So we can look at it this way, 5 plus 2 is 7, so 7 plus 7.3 is going to give me 14.3. And that's just going to be the number that I'm putting at the top of my exponent, or at the top of the fraction in the exponent. So I have 10 to the power of 14.3 divided by 5. So 14.3 divided by 5 should give me 2.86. So now my expression is 10 to the power of 2.86. And then when I do that, when I actually take 10 to the power of 2.86, which I'll do right now, so 10 to the power of 2.86, that gives me 724.43596 and blah, blah, blah. So in this case, in order for us to determine how many significant figures we need in our final answer, we have to go back to the original problem and look at the two numbers we were given. We have 7.3 right here, which has two significant figures, and we have negative 2 right there as the absolute magnitude. And in this case, we only have one significant figure. So in order for us to determine whether we're using one or two significant figures for our final answer, we have to go with the least amount of significant figures given in the problem. And that is one sig fig. So we go all the way back down to the final answer that we have. And now we got to figure out where do we cut off and round off our number. So the first digit that we're already dealing with is a non-zero digit. It is a seven. So afterwards, we have to be able to cut off the two and the four in some way. But we're not going to just go ahead and remove them from the number altogether. We're just going to round it. So what we do here is we can go ahead and highlight the number we're keeping, which is just the seven. And we're cutting after the seven. But our answer is in the seven hundreds. So in order for us to round this accordingly without losing any accuracy for the value of the number itself, which is 700 something, we have to make sure that we still can give it to that context. So what we do here was, is we can either say that the distance here is going to be either rounded off to 700 parsecs, which would be a correct way of representing the distance, rounded off properly, or you can also write this number in scientific notation by writing it as 7 times 10 to the power of 2 parsecs. And in both cases, the value is still 700. The only difference being the way the number is represented.